Gina, welcome to A House for Arts. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Laura. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell me a little bit about the Museum of Science and Innovation in Schenectady. What is its mission? Um, what kinds of collections do you have there? Um, well, it's uh, my side, Museum of Science and Innovation. Um, and it used to be the Schenectady Museum, which was really more of a local museum where they had textile collections as well as art. But there was a lot of science, right? There was a lot of gadgets, I call them, but they're really innovations from GE and various other places around the country. So back about 2015, um, the Schenectady Museum really switched over to a science museum and we are really focusing on, now we're focusing on STEAM. So we're really looking at, for example, we'll have a collection of toasters from the first toaster to a modern toaster and people don't even realize that the toaster was the second electrical appliance ever created. The first being the lamp. Wow. So just common household items that we sort of take for granted every day. We don't realize how old. How their old and is. how important and how they right. changed how we live in our culture. But we don't just have that. For example, we have the first um, dynamo, which which created electricity. We have the first uh, recorded human voice, which which wow. was Edison's. Yeah. So we have a lot of things that really chronicle innovation from the beginning of electricity, right? Because this Schenectady used to be the electric city. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know that's a really common way to refer to Schenectady. Exactly. I'm wondering what's the difference between the collections-based science museum like MySci Museum in Schenectady and a science center, which is sometimes something you also hear about science center in major cities. Like, What's the main difference between them? Maybe give us an example. In general, too. science centers don't actually have any collections. So everything they do, every topic that they consider is really focused around 18th century and 19th century phenomena, you know, explanation of, you know, physics or something like that. Whereas a collections-based museum is something altogether different. Research occurs in a collections-based museum. So for my side, we have over 400 scientists from around the world every year asking for information from our archives or collections. We, there's over 25 books written about the importance of our collections. So a science center actually doesn't have that, and they can pick the topics that they want. Our mission is driven around what's in our basement. What are the stories and the stories that your collections tell and your archives tell? That's really the big difference. What's the importance of my side to the capital region in particular? Well, I think it's, it's several fold. And I should tell you that, you know, this was new to me. I'm a former evolutionary biologist and paleontologist. I'm used to looking at bones and skins. And when I first came to my site and walked around the collections, I was gobsmacked by the, I don't want to refer to it as stuff, but it's just stuff that you can relate to. Yeah because we all have had, we all have a telephone, we all have a radio, we all have a refrigerator, but we never really think about how it was engineered, how the idea came up, the design, right? How did they market it, right? So we really chronicle innovation and the business thereof, which is, is one of the reasons why so many researchers come to us for information because GE during their heyday, they had it down. They had the formula down. So we're telling the story of the capital region and innovation, but that story is also the global story. I mean, you know, GE sold products to Mexico, to Europe, to, you know, all over the world. They changed the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's not just our capital region story, it's a global story. And I think it also, when people really get what happened here, it, it elicits pride. Right. And I think pride is really important to have right now, especially now. Right. Pride is really important and to understand that, wow, you know, that happened here before. Why can't we make it happen again? Yeah, a sense of grounding in the local community and the history of the community as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So tell me, you know, you, you talked before about looking at bones and skins in your, in your career historically, but how did you get to, uh, to my side? What was your journey? 
Um, well, I, you know, I, I, I got my doctor at Lamont Already Earth Observatory in Columbia University, and yes, okay, I studied hedgehogs. Um, <laughs> but they're really cute, though. There's they were tons absolutely of YouTube videos adorable. Of yes, they, yeah. and they, and they have a long history. They're actually, they, their lineage goes back way before dinosaurs went extinct. So they're quite interesting. Animals. And before toasters. And well before toasters, <laughs> right? And electricity. Um, and and um, I just really started getting, I, I love to do the research, but I really got interested in doing exhibitions. Mm -hmm. I find exhibitions really fun to do because you're working with engineers, you're working with designers, you're working with artists, you're working with graphic designers. So um, just sort of my, my moving around the country, taking different jobs, I found my side was looking for a job and I thought, wow, that's a really interesting museum. Not to mention that I went to undergraduate school in SUNY Oswego and my friend lived in Troy and I'd come and visit and I always thought I would retire in Troy. <laughs> it's a nice town, Troy. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like all this collaborative work as well as your focus at MySci on things like design, innovation. I mean, you know, when oftentimes when we think of creativity, we think of artists like painters or dancers or visual artists, but scientists are no strangers to creativity, oh, clearly. absolutely not. Um, I'm wondering how do you and the rest of the staff at MySci use creativity to engage with people who visit the museum um, and, and how you see that moving forward for the next couple of years? Well, that's a really good question. It's very COVID dependent right now. Um, we have been really switching gears and, and living up to our name, innovation, and really taking the next steps into to engaging our our community digitally. Our community is really spreading. Our, our, we've been taking a lot from our collections now and actually posting it online mm -hmm. with these stories not just from our collections, but connecting them to NASA collections, to the Smithsonian collections, to collections in California. And we are really telling a complete story for the first time because we can pull from different databases. And that conversation on social media, on our Instagram and, and our, our Facebook page, we've really started dialogues mm -hmm. among scientists. For example, one of, one of our posts about Knowles Atomic Laboratory, right? pulling back the veil. We posted one thing and it started this national conversation between scientists and then talking about what they want to see next. Right. And that's how we're pulling our, our creativeness from them. And I'm just curious, where are you posting these videos? Also so that viewers too can know where to look for these types of programs. Our, well, our website, website is www mysci, M-I-S-C-I dot org. And you can go on there and find our YouTube channel, which has a host of really great videos. You can like us on Facebook or our Instagram page. Yeah. Why do you think these, these programs sound fantastic? Why do you think these programs and partnerships at MySci are so vital to local communities as well as communities more nationally and, and internationally, it sounds like? Well, you know, this area is really interesting because it has m more PhDs, mathematicians, and engineers per capita than anywhere else in the world. Even more than Boston. Even. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it no, does. No, 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 no. That's okay. I'm thinking um, of PhDs. And so it's it's phenomenological, right? But yet. The underlying issue is that we also have a huge amount of poverty and poor and underserved communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, MySci is located in one of those communities. And so I think it's really important to connect the two. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, we've started a partnership with Clarkson University. Mm -hmm. They call it CRC Clarkson, uh, Capital Region Clarkson. Um, and their Department of Education, Graduate School of Education is right across the street from us. And we're starting this partnership to really drill down on how do we engage these communities from the time they're little tiny ones you know, all the way up through college, and how do we engage the teachers? Because right. a lot of teachers that teach elementary school learn pedagogy, they don't learn science, and they're 
Right. They got to teach science. Right, right. They're not learning about the content that they're teaching, but they're teaching the methods. That's they're learning exactly about the methods right. of teaching. That's rather. exactly right. Can you give me a little more of a picture of, of an example of what that might look like with this partnership with Clarkson and working with teachers? Is there any particular example you can think of? Yes, well, right now we're working on um, a new master's degree program in experiential learning where we really want the teachers to get away from some of the things that they're used to mm -hmm. and get their kids engaged in, you know, week-long topical things that include, you know, math, science, history, sociology, civics, all in one fell swoop because that really is what science is, right? Mm -hmm. You can't look at the toaster, you ask, okay, here's the question, Gina, why did they, why was the toaster the second thing they ever created? Because more women went on fire. Hmm trying to make toast. Remember they wore all the, 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 right. the long dresses and the right. long sleeves and they were sticking these tongs in the fire to toast bread and everybody toasted bread because <laughs> bread was so hard to make and it was expensive. That's why they made it. So you gotta think about what was happening in the history. Right, right. Why they did those things. Why did they create these little breakfast items that you see in photographs on tables when they had a stove, well, it was a it was a coal burning stove. It took a long time to get it going in the morning. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to plug in, heat up their breakfast, and go. Right. And and so teaching teachers these, you know, it's like the envelope around the right the story, the human experience, the fuels exactly. And science. Thank you, and the science yeah. behind it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds absolutely amazing, Gina. I can't wait to check out all the new programs that you have for my site. It's such a pleasure having you on Thank the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you, Lara.